expected their dad to be their dad, but instead, he was their monster. Hello, true crimers. This is the case of John Battaglia. Viewer discretion is advised. John Battaglia was born on August 2nd, 1955 in Enterprise, Alabama. He was born into a military family, so basically throughout his childhood they moved around a lot. He lived in several different states here in the U.S. He also lived in Germany uh, and I think a couple other places in Europe as he grew up. By the time he was in the high school age range, they would be living back in the States, and he would go to high school in two different states. So both in Oregon and then lastly in New Jersey, and he graduated from high school in New Jersey. He would then attend Fairleigh Dickinson University, which was in New Jersey, and he was going there to become an accountant. I guess that's what he wanted to do. He initially went to school for medicine, uh, but at some point he changed his mind and said he would rather be an accountant. But then he dropped out of college by 1976, and he joined the Marines. While in the Marines, he was a sergeant. Uh, he seemed to be well respected. I, I think he had issues in the Marines with drugs and alcohol. Uh, but eventually he would uh, be, I guess, honorably discharged from the Marines, from what I understand. And then he moved back to the States, where he would again try to become an accountant. At this point, his dad was living in Texas, uh, specifically in the Dallas area. And so that's where he moved back to when he moved back to the States. And he would go to, I guess, night classes to earn his CPA. And his... Aspirations and his dreams came true. He became an accountant. Some point during this, uh, in his, you know, adult years, he would marry a woman named Michelle Getty. The two of them would have a daughter together. Her name was Christy. But John, well, he wasn't a great husband. Uh, he was very verbally abusive to Michelle. He always doted his daughter. He always took good care of her. He never yelled at her never raised a hand to his daughter, but it could not be the same for Michelle because he not only started off verbally abusing her, but then it turned into physical assault. And so she was able to say, hey, I'm leaving this. We're, I'm walking away from you. And so one day, John basically followed Michelle as she was dropping Christy off at Christy's school. And then John got out of his car he walked up to Michelle on the school grounds and he beat the crap out of her right then and there. He just pummeled her and he severely broke her nose. Michelle then calls police. Uh, John at this point has fled, uh, but he finds out that Michelle called the police. Obviously she did. He didn't like that. So he, I guess, found her when she was near a bus stop and then he came up to her and he pummeled her again. He beat the shit out of her again. This one was so bad that she had to be hospitalized and she was hospitalized for some time. She pulled through uh, and she was fine in the end. Uh, you know, physically she, she recovered. And then kind of unbelievably, so he was arrested at this point, finally. But the crazy part is he, he pled guilty to a misdemeanor and he was only sentenced to two years probation. So he never actually went to jail or prison for beating his wife. Sometime later uh, in Dallas, Texas, John meets a, another woman. Her name is Mary Jean Pearl. The two of them hit it off. Now, according to Mary Jean, John did fill her in on his past with his ex-wife, to a degree. 
Apparently he told her that there was some physical altercations However, he never told Mary Jean that he actually hospitalized his ex-wife, uh, and he never went more than just saying, you know, I, you know, I hit her, but it was, you know, it was nothing major. Basically, he lied to her about the extremes of it. And so, on April 6, 1991, John and Mary Jean got married. On January 9th, 1992, their first daughter together was born, and her name was Mary Faith. Then, a few years later, on January 17th, 1995, they had their second daughter. Her name was Liberty. I don't really have um, much information on the two girls because, unfortunately, they didn't live very long um, to really establish uh, a life. They both attended John S. Bradfield Elementary School there in Texas. All I can really find is that the two of them were just uh, really uh, considered very sweet young girls. They were always like helping their friends and they were just super friendly, very outgoing, uh, and they were just really well behaved uh, and just really, really good kids. John Battaglia, he loved his daughters by all accounts. Um, everything that's ever been said about him to a point uh, when it came to his two girls is that he completely showered them with love. He doted upon them all the time. He gave them anything they wanted. He always uh, pampered them and just showed so much affection towards his two girls that there was almost this, you know, Jekyll and Hyde thing going with them because the same could not be said for Mary Jean, his wife, second wife. It started off with verbal altercations with John towards Mary Jean. And then it slowly became physical. He would kind of, you know, hit her. He would slap her. He would grab her. You know, say horrible things to her and about her. He would talk crap about her uh, to her friends uh, behind her back. Just say awful things about her. Untrue things. Slowly but surely, it just got worse and worse. So by January of 1999, Mary Jean Pearl finally decided, I'm pulling the plug on this marriage, we're done, and so she filed for divorce. John Battaglia really hated Mary Jean. I mean, really hated her at this point. He, uh, he put like a, an answering machine in the girl's room um, at the home that he shared, at, you know, with Mary Jean until they separated. Uh, and they lived in a really nice house, this really, like, beautiful, big, uh, spacious home. And a lot of that was because, you know, Mary Jean, she owned, like, I think an antique shop, and she was very successful at it. Um, John obviously brought in money with his accounting work. And, you know, it, they, they had a really nice house together. Uh, but he put an answering machine uh, with a phone in the girls' room. And so that after they separated, he would, like, call and leave messages for the girls. You know, typically very friendly, you know, fatherly uh, type messages for him. It was then Christmas morning, I believe in 2000, that John Battaglia went to uh, Mary Jean's home with his daughter from the first marriage, Christy, and they were there to pick up the two girls so they could go to, I guess, a Sunday service, something like that, you know, just for the, for the holiday. One thing led to another where in front of all three of his girls, John began to just punch and punch and punch Mary Jean. Like, really assaulted her badly. On Christmas Day, in front of his three children, they said that he pulled her hair so hard that he kicked her while she was on the ground and she was crying and screaming for him to stop. Mary Jean was bloodied, she was bruised horribly, and after he took off with all the kids, uh, she called 911 and John was arrested and he was convicted this time. But again, he was allowed to plead guilty to a misdemeanor assault charge and got two more years probation, not a day in prison. Not a day in prison for viciously beating a woman in front of her, her kids. Nothing. No time. So there's a massive failure somewhere in the system 
because maybe if he was in prison, well, the rest may not have happened. After that Christmas, so I guess now it's the following, uh, the Easter that followed that Christmas, um, John Battaglia found out that Mary Jean had given his daughter Christy a $50 gift card for Easter as a gift because she knew Christy because, you know, John and Mary Jean were married for quite some time. Um, and so she had this motherly kind of approach with her. And so she was just buying her an Easter gift. Well, John, uh, he really, really hated that. So he then called the answering machine in the girl's room at Mary Jean's house and he left a voicemail. The entire message he said was, Mary Jean, the next time you give my daughter $50, why don't you tell her how you screwed her out of a college fund? You pig. How does that feel, pig? And that brings us to May 2nd, 2001. John still had visitation rights with the girls. Um, that was still arranged, and for a while it was working fine. On May 2nd, 2001, John, uh, that was his night to have the girls, and he said the plan was to take them out to dinner. So, Mary Jean, uh, they would they would meet at this, like, parking lot, typically, to, like, exchange the kids, uh, because he wasn't allowed on their property. This particular day, Mary Jean said John was running late, which felt very unusual, because he was never late for this kind of thing, uh, so she felt very, like, uneasy with this, but... Eventually, he showed up. Mary Jean Pearl says she watched the two girls get into the back of his car, and she looked at them, they smiled at her, and they waved. She smiled and waved back. And that was the last time she would ever see her two girls again. Mary Jean Pearl, I guess, had plans herself that evening, but for some reason, I guess she canceled those plans. And she was then going to, I guess, a friend's house. At some point beforehand, this is hours now after uh, she dropped the kids off with John. She answered a phone call from her mom. Her mom says that John called and wanted Mary Jean to call him when she gets a chance. So Mary Jean Pearl gets to her friend's house, which is where she would end up going. And she called John. When she did... Uh, John was very irritated, very angry, and she could almost kind of hear crying in the background, like the girls were crying. Uh, and he told, he gave the phone to one of the girls, and you can, he I guess you can hear him saying, tell mommy what I told you to say. So this next clip is Mary Jean recounting that conversation, brief conversation, um, while later on at a later date in court. I said, hi. Hi, John. My mom called and said that the kids want to ask me something. And he said, Girls? And Faith goes, Mommy, why do you want Daddy to have to go to jail? I go, no, John, don't do this. And then I hear Faith going, No, Daddy, please, Daddy, don't do it. Daddy, please, don't do it. And I hear him yell, Mary, Christmas. So Faith had asked her mom, why do you want daddy to go to jail? And then Mary Jean says she hears, no, daddy, no, 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 daddy, please, no. And then bang, 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 gunshots. Then I guess the other daughter um, said, daddy, please don't, don't do it, daddy, please. And then bang, 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 more gunshots. John Battaglia had shot and killed both of his daughters. Faith was shot three times. Liberty was shot five times. John gets back on the phone to an absolutely hysterical Mary Jean, and he just says to her, Merry f***ing Christmas, with regards to when he beat her on Christmas. Mary Jean hangs up the phone and calls 911 immediately. So she tells, you know, she tells the operator that basically she thinks her ex-husband just killed her two daughters um, while she was on the phone with them. Apparently, because John had found out that Mary Jean Pearl went back to police to let them know that he broke his parole, that apparently made him really, really mad. Like, it pissed him off. 
So he did this. Allegedly, after he shot and killed both his daughters, he just calmly went to a bar, had a few drinks, where he then picked up the phone at the bar and he called uh, his uh, daughter's phones with the answering machine in their, in their bedroom. And this is the message that he left for them. Good night, my little baby. I hope you're resting in a different place. I love you. I wish that you had nothing to do with your mother. She was evil and vicious. So in case you couldn't understand it or whatever, what he said to them was, Hi girls, I just want to tell you how very, very brave you are, and I hope you are resting in a better place now. I wish you had nothing to do with your mother. She's evil and vicious and stupid. He then leaves the bar and he goes to a tattoo parlor that's in the area and he gets two tattoos on his arm, two roses, that he got in memory of his two daughters the two daughters that he had just shot and killed while their mother listened. Basically, police had found out where John was, and they got to him. He was very belligerent, uh, very, uh, you know, violent and angry with police. He started throwing uh, blows at them, and they punched him back, and they gave him a pretty gnarly black eye. Good. I wish it was worse, but it is what it is. And then he was put in handcuffs, and arrested. John Vitalia had this very really this creepy, evil demeanor about him. Every chance he was in court, and if Mary Jean was there with regards to this, because he's now charged with both counts of murder, and that these are capital murder charges, so they are now going to be seeking the death penalty for this man. But I guess in court, he would always like smirk at Mary Jean. He would give her like little silly looks just to really dig it in more what he had done. Why did he do it? Why did he kill his two daughters, the two girls, his children that he always pampered, loved, and was nothing but a wonderful father to? He has never really answered that question. Not truly. The, the thought process is, is he did it as revenge towards Mary Jean that the worst possible thing he could do to her is to take away her two daughters, the two loves of her life. Um, instead of inflicting any physical harm on Mary Jean, he did it to the two girls, two innocent children. Liberty was just six years old. Mary Jean was nine years old. John didn't let his two girls really experience life. He took a future away from both of them. He took everything away from them. He took the love and the joy and the happiness that they provided to Mary Jean and everyone in their family. Uh, he just stole that. Just took it away for some sick, perverted revenge. Because he was an angry little man, he just killed his two daughters. So, John Battaglia goes on trial, um, and again, he's basically an asshole the entire time, and his defense really didn't have a defense. There was no, like, insanity defense, because he very clearly knew what he was doing. He calculated all of this, everything. This was the work of someone who was in their right mind, so to speak, not someone who was not in control of themselves. The jury deliberated for 19 minutes. That's one of the shortest I've ever heard in my life. They came back and said, guilty, and they sentenced him to death. And that was on April 30th, 2002. He would uh, appeal his conviction because basically anyone who gets the death penalty is always appealing their convictions. But after like a couple of years, he kind of came out and said that he thinks I don't know why, I don't know what, what his reasoning or what the point of this was, but he would say like that he was uh, convicted uh, by demons, I, actual demons, I guess, I don't know. He said that the district attorney's office there and the, 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 the police and sheriff's departments there, they were all uh, trying to cover up some worse crimes and they were 
so they threw John Battaglia under the bus and and they were trying to like I guess falsely accuse him of which is just nonsense like none of that was true and so why he said it who knows he's at that point maybe he is a little cuckoo cuckoo wackadoo he did interviews uh, with reporters, and he always had this very flippant, very just like, blech attitude, like snarky, and just, you just, why are you giving him the time of day with, by letting him talk? And this is something, this is part of one of his interviews where he basically says he didn't kill his daughters. Not really. So people think what all that meant was that he he didn't really kill his daughters, he just sent them to a better place because they were no longer with their mother. This guy is just a genuine evil son of a bitch. He is pure evil. He's vile. He continued to appeal and appeal, hoping for what? I don't know. I mean, this was like as clear as guilt as you could possibly get. I mean, th th there was just no question about it. There was no chance in hell he was ever going to win an appeal. His execution, I guess, was halted a few times, and it wouldn't be until February 1st, 2018, when his day of execution finally came. Then the execution itself apparently was scheduled to commence at some point in the afternoon, but it got delayed by several hours, and then they finally brought him into the execution chamber, which was going to be the lethal injection. He was put on the table, uh, and I guess he, he looked out the window, because there's people who were viewing, and I guess it was, there was a lot of people there, including Mary Jean Pearl. She was there to watch this man uh, and lose his life. So apparently he looks over and goes, ah, oh, how many people are in here? Like, really, like, happy? And he's like, oh, that's a lot. Like, it's so, it's so creepy. He then sees Mary Jean Pearl and basically locks eyes with her and he, he taunts her one last time. He says, with a very jovial attitude, well, hi, Mary Jean. And he's smiling. I'll see you later. Bye. They administer the drugs, right? And then this man... His eyes close, and then he opens his eyes again and says, Am I still alive? And then, like, a couple seconds go by, and he says, Oh, there it is. Now I feel it. And then 22 minutes after the drugs were first administered, he was declared dead at 9.40 p.m. A lot of people began to question why was John Battaglia ever allowed to even get to a point where he can murder his two daughters? How was this man allowed to beat his first wife, put her in the hospital with severe injuries, and only get a probational sentence and not spend time in prison? Then how is he able to do that exact same thing again and beat his wife in front of his, his three children, and get away with it again in terms of just like a slap on the wrist, two years probation. Uh, the judge who basically sentenced him to probation after this all happened, he resigned and he be, he was like running for office, I guess. Uh, but he lost. Um, and so he was no longer a judge and he lost his election run. Good. They then passed a bill uh, at some point during, at some point, obviously after the murders, they passed a bill in Texas that would, I guess, when it comes to domestic violence issues, uh, in terms of not allowing parental visits for men or women who commit domestic abuse against, you know, the child's other parent, um, had only that been in effect um, beforehand, because he was legally allowed to and illegally supposed to have visitation with his kids. This is not something Mary Jean Pearl wanted 
to do. She didn't have a choice. The law said that it had to happen. It's just so sad that these had these murders had to occur for that law to kind of come into effect or change. It's insane. But John Battaglia is hopefully uh, roasting in the 100th layer of hell, and hopefully he is having the worst experience, if you believe in hell and all that. And hopefully those two angels, hopefully the two of them are now resting in peace. But that is it for this case. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I tell four true crime stories a week here on YouTube, Sunday through Wednesday. And then I tell one on Instagram on Thursdays and one on Friday on Facebook. And then I do a couple of videos over on TikTok as well. So please feel free to definitely subscribe to me here on YouTube. Uh, give the video a like so it pushes it out to the YouTube world. And then follow me on all the other platforms if you so choose. Uh, the links to all of those are down below in the description in my link tree. Pretty easy, just click on them and you can go there. Next, if you have a case you would like me to cover on here or any other platform, uh, please email me. The information is below in the description as well. Uh, check my case list in my link tree. The case list is long, but you can scroll through it or search through it. It's alphabetical. Um, and if you do see the name on there, you don't have to email it to me because I'm already it's already there. And I pick my cases at random, so I will cover it eventually. I just don't know when. But if you don't see the name, email me the name, where it happened, and when it happened, and I will add it to my list eventually. Just give me some time. Next, if you would like to support me in any way, we do sell merch. We sell uh, t-shirts and hoodies and a wine glass. We just revamped the designs and all that on there. There's even a cuckoo cuckoo wackadoo shirt now, which is pretty cool. So uh, feel free to check that out. We ship internationally all over the world. Uh, and it's also in the link tree below. Uh, if you have a Discord account and you want to join my Discord server, uh, it's in the link tree. Roxy's hungry. Jingle, jingle. But if you're going to join the Discord, please be over the age of 18. If not, you'll be kicked out of that joint. So peace. But that is it for this video, true crime, a rooney dooney dooney ding dongs. I shall see ya for the next video, probably tomorrow. My neck is probably broken now. Ah, uh, I should not have done that. Just kidding, it's not. Oh. Uh, hmm? Oh, um. <laughs> I never know how to say goodbye. Never know, I never know how to say goodbye. Yeah, but I'm good. You buy, buy good. Nope, that's. Ugh. They're still here. <laughs> They're still here. Okay, bye.